Hey guys, it's me, the Don Fanatic, and welcome to week five of the Pokemon Premier League Division One, season five. Uh, that mouthful doesn't get easier to say any time. Uh, anyway, getting straight to it, we are up against the Maryland Tour Terrapins, managed by my very dear friend Kelly, also known as Under the Radar, uh, also in the NPA, I believe. Um, and uh, I think that's it. I'm probably missing something else, but a great league battler. Um, someone who's always up and around there by the end of the season. Last season he was very close to the title. Get to it by Mono. Um, so this season I'm sure he's out for, uh, well, revenge. And looking at his team, you can tell that it's absolutely terrifying. He has got Darmanitan, Kyron Black, Zapdos, Fortress, Greninja, Mew. So on paper, these six are absolutely terrifying. His draft is probably the smallest, um, or one of the smallest out of the whole bunch. Um, he only has Comfey and the Suicune left on his uh, squad, which he didn't obviously bring, which I didn't really expect. These are the six I definitely expected. So, quick overview of my team. We've got the Choice Scarfed uh, Electivire. Um, it's there to outspeed the Greninja. Um, I can take the Water Shuriken fairly well. Um, he hasn't got ground types. This was definitely first on my list to bring because I can spam Volt Switch um, and get a nice, you know, you, uh, sorry, Volt Turn core going on with Mega Beedrill and Inferno. Um, next up we've got a, uh, we've got quite a odd Necrozma set, but it's one that could seriously just go through his whole team. Um, it was uh, Dark Pulse, Power Gem, uh, Charge Beam, and Rock Polish. So you look at his team and tell me what his uh, Power Gem switching is, because he hasn't got one. Um, I did toy about bringing Calm Mind over the Charge Beam, which obviously would reduce the amount of luck and hacks based on, you know, trying to get these Charge Beam boosts. However, I needed Charge Beam to actually be able to hit Greninja. Um, I believe two Power Gems at plus one may... I had a chance of missing out on the KO, so uh, it's not something I was too fond on doing. So that was that set. Um, we've got the standard physically defensive Gastrodon with Scald, Earth Power, Recover, Toxic, Choice Band Infernape, um, U-Turn, Stone Edge, Mac Punch, and Flare Blitz. Um, Mega Beedrill Adamant didn't need Jolly on this... Uh, team, which was nice. Sword Stance, U-Turn, Poise Jab, Knock Off, and Yachi Berry. Oh, I forgot to say Rindo Berry on um, Gastron as well for any Rogue Hidden Power Grasses. Uh, and I have got Yachi Berry on Togekiss, just so I could potentially take a nice beam um, from the Greninja, or the Kyrian Black. Or he could obviously have the um, Z-Move as well, I believe. Yeah, it's one of his Z-Users. I uh, don't know what the rest of his Z-Users are. Uh, I think Greninja may be one, and maybe Mew as well. Um, but I was fully expecting some kind of bulkier Mew to help him take on the Necrozma uh, and the Infernape potentially. Um, but anyway, let's just get into the game. Uh, I'm going to lead off on Necrozma because like I said, he hasn't got a ground type on his draft. Uh, he does lead with the, uh, the I forgot what this thing's called, Fortress, that's the one. I'm going to Volt Switch out, I'm going to go straight into Necrozma. Um, he goes for the Earthquake, it does nothing, so I'm, I'm seeing Fortress as like a setup opportunity because if I can get to plus two speed, which I do, um, I now outspeed his whole team because uh, I outspeed, I think I did it so I outspeed Scarf Greninja. Um, if that was something I wanted to bring. So I do officially outspeed his whole draft. So if I'd got the Charge Beam boost there, I'd have been well and truly set to get some damage off uh, against his whole team. Obviously, as you can see, he toxic me and Gyro Ball. Um, Gyro Ball, just, I didn't even expect him to bring it. Um, but hey, uh, he gets the Gyro Ball again. I made the stupid switch there. I should have stayed him in the Crossbow and killed that thing because I would have outspeed anything else in his team and got a big hit off. Um, so that was a bad play on my behalf. And obviously, I bring in... Uh, elective. I think I'll resist, but I'm hasty nature, so I'm minus defense, and that gyro does a lot. So, um, I think at this point, Kelly knows I'm an offensive Necrozma, uh, so he's going to bring in Fortress and sack it off. I do click Dark Pulse, and that thing just dies. So, um, I could have maybe, you know, killed that thing off with a Dark Pulse. Uh, I don't know what the role is, like, without messing around with a Charge Beam. So, uh, in comes Darmanitan. Um, doesn't prove to me that it's Scarfed at this point, but I'm very much of the thought that it would be Scarfed at that point. Um, so in comes Gastrodon. Uh, it turns out I think that my Gastrodon takes on this Zapdos incredibly well. Um, I give the Toxic. I'm either of the, you know, thinking I'm going to get Toxic on the Zapdos because it's obviously bulky because it deals with B, um, or he's going to go into Mew and I'm going to have just have to take the hit because poisoning and defensive Mew um, is awesome. So I go out into my Tokus. I could have made a really aggressive switch there into my uh, into my Mega Beedrill because I very much saw an energy ball coming. Uh, and then he goes for the Yachi Berry. Obviously, if I'd have got into Mega Beedrill, I could have got my Mega Evolution off and U-turn for free. And I think pretty much killed this thing. Um, 
So that's a shame. Obviously, he would have had to have, you know, switched around a bit if he wanted to play around Mega B. If I'd have got that, you know, Mega Evolution off at that point. So um, I clicked U-turn here because uh, I still wasn't sure if he was bulky or not. I hadn't seen that at this point. And he gets the static, which is incredibly frustrating because now he outspeeds everything on my team. Or sorry, Infinite doesn't outspeed much on his team. He has Mac Punch still, but. Even now, it's not going to be doing anything. Um, I do switch in on the Thunderbolt, which is nice, and I get the uh, boost. So now I, I am obviously going to outspeed his Darmanitan, which is nice. Um, I can't quite kill the Mew here with a Thunderbolt or anything like that, so I'm just going to have to switch out um, into Toad Kiss, and he goes for the Ice Punch, and I take that very well. Um, not sure if this Mew is actually invested in attack. I'm guessing from that damage, it probably isn't. Um, doing about 26%, and I'm going to click the Roost. Now, again... You know, you know, me and Kelly had like a really good game here, but it's just the more I watch this, the more sort of stupid things I realised that I did. So uh, I should have clicked Roost again there, because basically, I think he'd have died to Toxic this turn. And if he hadn't, I could have clicked Roost again next turn, and uh, then he would have died to Poison. So, big boo-boo on my behalf. And now Kyron Black comes in and clicks Ice Beam for the kill. Um, didn't really have a at all there. Um, because basically, Inferno was paralysed, otherwise I could have potentially switched in then, but never mind. Gonna have to click U-turn here because I can't kill this thing in one hit, and that does a huge amount of damage considering this is a Chiron Black. Um, he gets a crit Dragon Claw, and you know at this point I'm like, he's got the static paralysis, he's got the Dragon Claw crit. By no means did it matter because he's got the um, Z uh, Ice Beam or whatever it's called, Free Shock. So it doesn't matter, but you know it's just that this kind of hacks. It happened to me last week in Shardy as well, and then it makes you play on tilt. So. Ozzy, looking at the teams, we're still, you know, we've still both got our Scarfers, and we've still both got uh, offensive threats uh, left on the field. There, I think I should have gone into Infernape rather than these Aptos. However, obviously he had the switch initiative, so he could have gone into whatever he wanted. Uh, I'm just going to go into this thing because I think the best thing he has to hit me is Thunderbolt. But Kelly makes a smart play and goes for the U-turn. If I was Agility B drill, I think I would have just won the game there and then. Um, but alas, I'm not. I am Sword Stance, and uh, I died to a Flare Blitz. Obviously, I had no switch in. I have to bring in Fernape now because Electrify can't live anything. Could have risked a Speed Tie and gone for a Thunderbolt. Not sure if it would have killed, uh, but I do get the Stone Edge hit. I had to go Stone Edge in case he wanted to switch into Zapdos for some reason. Uh, in comes the Greninja. Obviously, he's going to have the Water Shuriken. I fully expect him to have that. And now it is uh, Scarfed, Electivire versus Greninja and the Zapdos. So I do have a chance to do the Water Shuriken if he doesn't get anything more than three rolls, which he doesn't. And I do take this thing out of Thunderbolt. Now obviously looking at his Zapdos, it was at about 86% health, I think. Um, and obviously I'm not going to be able to take him out of Thunderbolt. So if I had Stealth Rocks this game, uh, it could have potentially helped a bit more with this thing because this is probably the main thing that stopped me. Um, and it would also have helped with the Darmanitan and the... Kyron Black. Um, I obviously, I really wanted to bring Stealth Rocks this game. It was just really hard trying to fit them on my team. Um, Infernape, Steelix, and Necrozma. Necrozma had a really good offensive matchup, so I really wanted to bring offensive Necrozma. Again, Infernape had a decently uh, or a decent offensive matchup against this team. Just look at the likes of uh, Greninja, Kyron Black, Fortress. Um, you know, and then even then, uh, nothing on his team really appreciates switching into a Flare Blitz. So. Um, I was kind of, I felt forced into bringing this team. Stealth Rocks would have been amazing. Whether it would have swayed the, you know, the result, I'm not entirely sure. But hey, um, bit of unfortunate hacks. You know, in hindsight, it didn't really have any kind of effect on the outcome of the game. Um, but it, it is annoying when it happens two weeks in a row when it, you know, it just kind of rubs it into you a bit. So it is another 1-0 loss. Um, but hey, we're not getting trounced. Um, there have been very close games between Kelly and Shardy. And uh, they're very good battlers, and they're definitely people who are going to be up there at the top um, by the end of the season. So I have no shame in losing to them at all. Um, next week, I'm not entirely sure who we're up against, but actually next week we have got a one-week break. Um, people are in the middle of their exams and uh, just generally need to catch up on other things. Um, it gives people a nice break to also potentially team build if they want for the future. And uh, yeah, just try and get this keeping to you know go smoothly as it is this season. So... A good game, Kelly. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I think we both agreed it was a good game. Um, we both played well, um, but in hindsight, there were definitely better plays I could have made. Um, I've kind of rambled on. Just make sure you do check out Kelly's links below to his YouTube and his Twitter. Um, otherwise, I don't have anything else to add. Make sure you leave some comments about how you think the season's gone so far, reaching the, the halfway point nearly. Uh, next game will be week six. I cannot remember who it's against, but we're going to start getting to a crucial point in the season where we've got people in and around us in the league table. 
um, and I'm going to have to pick up the wins to actually, um, you know, climb the table and stay clear of that relegation. So, yeah, thanks for watching this video, guys. Make sure you leave a like if you did enjoy. Leave me a comment, like I said, of how you think the season's gone so far. Um, I very much thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.